about two years to produce a finished dog, two years, a lifetime's experience and infinite patience. I always set myself a high standard and sometimes I have a job to achieve it, but I, I usually get there in the end. Arnold is one of the few professional dog handlers still employed full-time on a private estate. He lives and works at Stratfield Say near Reading, the seat of the Dukes of Wellington. I would think it's probably the only large estate that has a full-time handler now. Most of the ones that I did know of, uh, the uh, owners just died and the kennels fell through. There's nobody to keep them up. Well, at the moment, we've got about, I think it's ten. They fluctuate when the Duke leaves his. If he's away, he brings his dogs up to stay at the kennels. We've got three puppies of varying ages. I find that a three puppy is ample because I think if you get too many and you get over dog, you see you've not only got the puppies, you've got to keep the old ones up to scratch right through the summer. Arnold has worked for the present Duke of Wellington for over 20 years, running his kennel, picking up on shooting days, and generally enjoying a mutual passion for gun dogs. Today, he's introducing one of his pups to water for the first time, and the Duke is there to share the moment. Has he wetted his feet before? Oh, yes, he has. <laughs> he just. <laughs> no problem, loving it. Moss. 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 See, when he first went, he didn't know what to do. No. No. He's using Moss. his feet right now. Moss. No. I won't give him too much. Come on. Moss. <laughs> he stops paddling every so often, that's the thing. Moss. Moss, come on, Moss. Come on. Come on, Moss. Keep them all day. Yeah. Moss, come. Come on. Come on, Moss. Now sit. Sit. Come on, little fella. Come on. Good job. Come on. Quint. Come along. Come along. That's a boy. Come on. Good little fella. Yeah. Good job. There. There's a clever little dog. Yes, sir. Come on, I'll bring I don't want him to overdo it. He's, mm. he's had a good swim, and he'll get better as he goes along. Master and servant they may be, but when it comes to working the dogs, there's no doubt who's in charge. It'd be best if you, you sit them in the gap, if you can. Mm -hmm. And uh, how far? It's somewhere near that uh, willow tree. Yes, I, I think I should... Get on. Over. They're very much working dogs, but they're also my own uh, companions and friends, you know, in the house, and then the kennel as well. And um, I'm very keen on, on working the dogs at field trials. He's, I've done a bit myself, but not very much. I'm not very good at it. But he, of course, is a past master at it. And uh, it gives me great satisfaction to have good dogs that run in trials and do well. He's run the championship twice while he's been with me. And uh, it's been a hobby of mine, and uh, I enjoy it. So it's, it's a working tool of the trade, at the same time something which I enjoy enormously. Does Mr White Robinson keep you up to scratch? Very much so, yes. He's a very hard taskmaster. <laughs> yeah. I enjoy shooting very much, but shooting for me, without 
uh, being able to work my dog would lose 50% of, of the fun of it, you know, and the enjoyment of it. And uh, I'm very happy just to go out and pick up, because I love working the dogs, and I like seeing how they do it, and uh, when their dog uses its head and intelligence, and it gives me a great kick when they do a really good retrieve, you know. But if the Duke is to get his kicks, then Arnold has to put in countless hours on the basic groundwork, starting when the pups are just three months old. Come on. You could so what, what are you going to do with yeah. him at this age? Well, I'm just going to give him his first retrieve, you know, uh, um, and I, I use this uh, a gully like this, or an alleyway or a ride, whichever you term it, because they haven't got the scope to run past you. You can collect the... It's much easier to collect the dummy. And I hold them to start, start with. Now, you just give them a little smell. Yeah. Oh, little fella. Come on. Yeah. It's a little fella. Yeah. Come along. Oh, good little fella. There. Good little dog. Come along. There's a boy. He's a good boy. Come on. Oh, come on. <laughs> There's a clever little dog. Oh, uh, dear, well, dear, well dear. Well pleased with that, <laughs> Wasn't that clever? Oh, very clever. There. You see, he's only had a ball before. This is the first time he's had, had uh, anything resembling a dummy. He just had one ball the other day. So that's straight instinct, then? Yes, I'll just give him one more. Let's see. Let try. a little fella. Here's the little dog. Come on. Here's the boy. Come along. Come on, there's a clever little fella. Come on, ooh, ooh, come along. There, there's a good boy. There. Clever little dog. To discover how Arnold trains his dogs, you have to watch him at work. Now I'm going to just give him a little walk into heel. Uh, walking on the lead, really. It's getting him used to the lead. Come on, boy. It's not something he can explain in words. He works on instinct and experience. He always quiet, always calm. Mm -hmm never allowing himself to be ruffled. Heel walking is a very important thing. In some young dogs, it, it's quite a hard lesson to teach. I keep the lead nice and loose, you know. Heel. They don't all accept it easily, whereas I think Quince will. He's a, almost a natural heel walker. A Hampshire man by birth, Arnold spent his early days working for Lord Rank at Sutton Scotney, handling pointers and Labradors. Get on. He quickly went to the top in pointers, producing five national field trials champions from a single litter. I've had some good dogs in my time and I've enjoyed trialling them. I mean, if you get a good dog and he's running well, they're a joy to get watch on. and a joy to, to run. He's been every bit as successful with Labradors since he joined the Duke in 1969. I've always liked labs. I get a lot of enjoyment out of training labs. And Larch here, with all his dash and enthusiasm, is one of his favourites. Larch, over, over. He's a tough dog to handle. Over. Mind you. He's, he Steady. sometimes Steady. gets the bit between his Steady. teeth and uh, oversteps the mark. But normally. Over. He, he's really enjoying himself, and I've, so I've seen him jump a, a five-bar gate with a pheasant in his mouth, no bother. Sit. 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 Over. The idea of the jumps is to get him to the word of over. command, over, over, because later on in life, he's probably going to have several obstacles to jump, uh, whether it's a ditch over. or a wire fence, uh, which you get a lot of round, round young over. trees. And, up, up the sides of woods and, and so on. Sit. To train for another potential hazard on shooting days, Arnold has built a special enclosure stocked with rabbits. The dogs have to work through them, ignoring them completely. It's an exercise that seems to go against nature. But Larch and Linnet are showing a fine disregard for temptation. Linnet, Linnet. They don't very often chase much if they're reliable in the rabbit pen. I mean, the next thing I do is to take them out and for walks and, and sh show them a wild rabbit or two if I can, or even a hare, because he mustn't chase a, a, a rabbit, hare, or any ground game a yard, let alone ten. Sit. Give. 
Keith, sit down. Sit down. The shooting season may still be some way off, but Arnold has a more pressing reason for polishing up his dogs. This year, the Duke of Wellington is playing host to the annual game fair, an event that attracts a knowledgeable crowd. Arnold is to be a star attraction, demonstrating the finer arts of dog handling. And with royalty present, Arnold and his team have to be on top form. One of the events that draws the crowds is the international gun dog team tests between England, Scotland, Ireland and Wales, fielding some of the best handlers in the country. The dogs have to work in these sort of conditions on shooting days. They can't pick and choose where birds are going to fall. He's got the dummy. At this level of competition, only two breeds are in contention, Springer Spaniels and Labradors, the most universally popular shooting dogs in Britain. You only have to listen to commentator Martin Dealey to understand why. And if anybody says you've only got one dog, it's got to be a Springer. There's nothing like working behind a good Springer. It's like driving a sports car if you've got a good one to smash him. But I went into Labradors probably about seven years ago, and I train Labradors for people, and I run Labradors in trials. And when you go behind a good Labrador onto a bird, and you're picking that particular bird in the field, and you see the style and the work and it using its nose well, that's just as much a thrill. Do remember that the exercise is not that easy, and some of the dogs have found difficulty in finding these retrieves. To make the event authentic, the organizers have recreated a winter shoot in high summer. Live pigeons are sprung from traps, and saluted by gunfire to simulate the quarry. The dogs aren't fooled, but they're happy to play the game. Part of the stubble has been ploughed up and replaced with a game crop, specially sown to give the dogs some cover to work through without spoiling the spectator's view. There are some real experts among this crowd who know a good dog when they see one. You see, Brian, I think if your dog sees that, it's an easy retriever. If it doesn't see it, it's a very hard one. Mm -hmm. You see, that's the second game, time he's yeah. been back. He's struggling now. No, he's struggling now for to get them. But it's like everything when you're a spectator, it's so easy. So easy. Uh, uh, but when you're yeah. there with a the dog, it's a different kettle of fish. If your dog isn't quite up to this standard, well, we're better than the game fair to pick up a few pointers. How old is this one? Two and a half. Two and a half. You still could do it, yeah. with a bit of persevering. But you, see, you may have to uh, use the, the, a little more strength on your turn, you know, but you do, if you give him regular exercise of this turning, but you must keep changing, and every time you change, you say heel. It's no good to say heel about once in five minutes. No. You've got to say every time you change. 30 different varieties of sporting dogs on show in the breed tent. Some are British to the core. Others are welcome immigrants. Whatever the task, there's a dog for every job. So you pay your money and you takes your choice. Labradors and Springers may be top of the pops, but they're not everyone's choice. The Irish Water Spaniel, with its tight curly coat, doesn't have many supporters, but what they lack in numbers they make up for in enthusiasm. They can turn their hand to everything, uh, duck shooting, pigeon shooting, uh, picking up, the, make a good pet dog if you've got the patience to train it. The silky-coated English setter is the most glamorous of all the gun dogs. His gentle disposition always wins plenty of friends. They're charming, aristocratic, gentle, beautiful to work with. I've seen so many wonderful dogs here, well-behaved dogs. Usually, if an event like this in the United States, you'll find a cross animal or two. I have not seen that here. Do you think we've got a different attitude to dogs in this country than you have? I think that most Europeans have a different attitude. Uh, I like your attitude about animals. It's a wonderful thing to have a nice animal. The little Brittany from France is certainly a nice animal, an all-purpose dog with an affectionate, easy-going nature. It's a scruffy little, jolly good, hard-working dog. They can go all day, never stop. The Weimarana is another breed that will hunt, point and retrieve, when it's awake, that is. Its cousin, the large Munsterlander, another German all-rounder, with a typically Teutonic attitude. 
that a reasoning dog, that a dog that likes to see a reason for doing anything. It doesn't um, unquestionably perform any tasks that you present it with. It, it likes to see the sense to it. And when you can um, appreciate this, then you're on the right track. Then there's the Italian Spinoni, hardy and patient with comic opera appeal. You only got to look for faces, especially the puppy. That uh, there's a lot of character, in it. and you know, sort of, uh, I don't know, there's something about him. You just got to look at him to think, well, he's different. These versatile European newcomers have already established a strong foothold on the British shooting scene. Well, really, it was the war years that brought them across. I think a lot of the servicemen brought them across. Um, and it's because, generally, someone says, hey, I can't have a Labrador for uh, formal drives. I can't have a Springer for rough shooting. Um, I can't have, maybe, again, a different type of dog, maybe a curly coat, something like that, for water, or, again, a Labrador for water work. What I want is something that will do everything. And people have claimed that the Hunt Point Retriever will do everything. It will point when they want it to. Uh, it will retrieve from water. It will retrieve from land. It will be a no-slip retriever. It will hunt cover. But it never seems to do it as well as the specialists. But it's a good all-round dog. People enjoy it. And it, it has become a fashion. There's no doubt about it in my mind. It's been kind of quite a fashionable dog. Um, but people have developed it. And that's the nice thing. They are beginning to develop it. It's been a very good dog. Meanwhile, the more traditional breeds are showing how they handle themselves in the 4 by 5 competition. The Labrador, the Golden Retriever, the Flat Coat, and the Chesapeake Bay Retriever. The Honourable Mrs Amelia Jessel devised this event to show the public their different ways of working. The Labrador, which is probably the most well known, works with a fairly low nose and seeks a ground scent. And it's therefore working with its tail up and its nose down, very fast zigzagging over the ground. With the golden, it holds its head much higher and takes what's called an air scent. And both just as efficient, but it's just a slightly different sort of habit. It just looks different because the golden, of course, has its nose higher. In some conditions of scent, the golden's way of working is better and in some conditions, the Labrador's way. The flat coat is somewhere in between the two. Some of the flat coats work to a ground scent and some to an air scent. And the Chesapeake is also, I think, a fairly high scenting dog. The local team, the Wessex Wanderers, is captained by Lady Christine Spencer-Smith, working her Chesapeake Bay Retriever, Woody. Woody. Chesapeake's very much a wildfowler's dog, it's very much a water dog, and in some ways it tends to look slower when it's moving, it's got a longer gait. A Labrador or a Golden is more flashy, faster sort of worker. Um, Chesapeake's love their water, that's their main thing. Why have you picked that breed over any other? I love their personalities, I like the fact that we can show them and we can work them. They're very much a dual purpose breed in this country still and they're very much one person dog which i like they they sort of follow you everywhere they're very Woody much a companion as well you're just picking up dogs for the past five years do you actually enjoy competition once it's over yes <laughs> good afternoon ladies and gentlemen he's starting with a little yellow pup called quill for the moment, at least, the competition is over for a lunchtime break. But instead of drifting away, the crowd pauses to watch the master at work, as Arnold White Robinson weaves his magic with a demonstration of retriever training. That the dogs are not bred for demonstration work, they're bred for work and field trials. He's quiet, he's firm, he's confident. But more than that, I think, when he's working with his dog, nothing else exists. Um, he's a man who is totally in touch with his dogs. Not mistaken, he's an old bird love that one of our children had many years ago. He is very dry with his humour, um, with people, and people sometimes think he's a little stern. But he's not. He's as kind as anything you can think. And, and to me, Arnold is what a lot of us would dream of being. He's made up dogs in the form of pointers and in Labradors to field trial champions. He's won championships with them. And uh, I think in all the minds of people who run in competition, he has got to be one of the legends of our time, certainly. Otherwise, if he's handling three dogs at once, they might all 
scientists aren't to go for the same bird.